This lesson is part one of exponent properties. Now a lot of this will be review for you because you should have seen this in Algebra 1 and uh, I know it's been a while for some of you since you've done that but uh, exponent properties are something that we're going to use throughout the year now and we're going to use all of our different exponent properties to simplify expressions. So I'm going to go through these rules pretty quickly and I'd like you to try these problems. The best thing for you to do is actually to pause the video before you even see some of these worked out. See if you can uh, get the correct answer, check with the key, and then move on from one section if you get them all correct. If you don't, then watch the explanation and make sure you understand why you were incorrect um, in your work. All right, first up is the product of powers property. So when I have um, something of the same base and I'm multiplying those, I simply add my exponents. So x to the a times x to the b is simply x to the a plus b. So you're going to keep your base and simply add your exponents. So something like x squared plus x cubed. Well, in this case, we know that we cannot do anything with this. this is, these are not like terms. We're also not multiplying them. So my final answer is just x squared plus x cubed. However, if it was x squared times x cubed, now I use my product of powers property and I add my exponents to get x to the fifth. So for example, in number one, I end up with x to the twelfth. Now in number two, this is the same base, negative two, so I do recognize that I can use the product of powers here. So I have negative two to the first power. This is also written as negative two to the first power. So I have actually negative two to the seventh after I add six and one. Now Eventually, I want you to um, evaluate this, but first let's just talk about what a negative is raised to an odd power. Well, we've talked about this quite a bit. We know that this should end up being a negative value overall, so I'm going to definitely make sure I write out that negative out in front. And then I'm, I'm going to just evaluate 2 to the 7th from there. So 2 to the 7th power is definitely something you're going to have to be able to evaluate without a calculator. So what I would suggest is starting with something you do know, like 2 squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, and after that, you can double that. So 2 to the 4th power, or sorry, 2 to the 3rd power would be 8. You're just going to double here. 2 to the 4th is 16. 2 to the 5th is 32. And 2 to the 6th is 64. One more, and you get 128. So negative 2 to the 7th power is negative 128. In number 3, um, you should recognize this as the same base, 3 to the 3rd power. Each of these is to the 1st power, so that's 3 to the 3rd power. And you have a z repeated here. Each of these z's is to the first power, so this is also z to the third power. When you evaluate 3 to the third, you get 27 z to the third power. A lot of times students will make a quick mental error here. They do 3 times 3, so try to avoid that. It's 3 to the third power. And finally, in number 4, um, the only base that's actually repeated is, this, is the x. So here's the only case where I'm going to add exponents, and I would get x to the seventh. But for this 3 and this negative 2, um, you can rearrange the order of multiplication. And I could have done that here as well. 3 times 3 times 3, and z times z times z, right? These are equivalent. That's equivalent to this expression here. So in this case also, I can rearrange and just think of 3 times negative 2 out in front, x to the 6 times x, and then a y. So really, I'm just going to multiply those two numbers to get negative 6. I'm going to add my exponents here to get x to the 7th, and that y does not have anything else to combine with, and I just leave the y there, so I'm left with negative 6x to the 7th times y. In my next rule, power of a power property, um, you're only going to use this when you have a set of parentheses with an exponent raised outside of those parentheses. When you see that, you're simply going to distribute here and multiply. You're finding the product, actually, of those two exponents. So you keep your base, and you multiply the exponents. So this is different than what we just talked about, x squared um, times x to the third, we would add our exponents. But when we see x squared to the third power, we multiply those exponents to get x to the sixth. Okay. So the reason why we just multiply our exponents as opposed to adding it is because if I expanded this, this is equivalent to y to the third repeated four times. And now from here you can clearly see that I can use my first rule where I simply add those exponents to get y to the twelfth. But we're going to take the shortcut. It is much faster. You simply multiply here to get y to the twelfth. So if, if in any case you forget some of these rules, you can always break them down and start um, and just expand things. It takes a lot longer because that's why we use these shortcuts. It saves us a lot of time. 
but in case you forget some of these rules on a test or a quiz, if you blank out, you can always expand, you know, everything and uh, use your, your basic rule here from the po product powers property where you can add your exponents. All right, number six is the last one I'm going to do from this section with you. I would like you to try seven and eight. In number six, I have a negative base here raised to a se the second power. Now, I can do this a couple different ways. Um, I can first evaluate the inside of this, so I'm just going to use order of operations. So I would take my parentheses, and this is the, the exponent in the innermost parentheses, so this ends up being a positive 36 raised to the fifth power. Now this is not something I would have you evaluate, that's a huge number, so without a calculator we would leave it as 36 to the fifth power. But this is also equivalent, if I were to multiply here, to negative 6 raised to the tenth power. These are actually equivalent expressions here. Now negative 6 raised to the tenth power though is actually the same as 6 to the tenth power, because I have a negative raised to an even power. So I would want you to simplify to get rid of that negative base if you can. Um, but both of these answers would be acceptable here. Again, 6 to the 10th is a huge number. This is the same as 36 to the 5th. I would not make you um, evaluate that without a calculator. So go ahead and try 7 and 8 and check with the key. For your next rule, power of a product property, when you see two different bases on the inside and an exponent on the outside, you need to make sure that you distribute that exponent to each of your base. So when raising a product to a power, so here's a product raised to the power of a, okay? You raise each base to the power. So, for example, in number 9, this I'm going to distribute here and multiply, so I have x to the 8th power. 2 times 4 is 8, and here this is a y to the 1st. Multiply here to get y to the 4th. Um, in number 10, you have three different bases, so you need to distribute this 4 three different times. A lot of times people forget about distributing it to the negative 3 here. So really this is negative 3 to the 4th power, then c to the 3 times 4, 12th power, and d to the 8th power, 2 times 4 gives me 8. From here I would evaluate here to get negative uh, 3 to the 4th power as a positive 81. I know that this is going to be positive because a negative raised to an even is positive, and then I have to simply evaluate 3 to the 4th. This is definitely something that you would be able to uh, do, you should be able to do without a calculator. Um, so there are certain powers that um, you can make sure you have memorized so you're quicker and more efficient with these um, multiplications or these uh, powers. So I will talk about that in class tomorrow just to let you know which powers you should have memorized and where you can kind of um, assume that you'd be able to use a calculator, but in that case you would definitely do that without a calculator. Um, I want you to try 11 on your own. I'm going to work on 12 with you real quick. In number 12, um, some people have, a tr have trouble with this negative on the outside. They're not really sure what to do with it. Well, right now, the only thing that's being raised to the fourth power is the 3y. So if I were to expand this, I think it's really clear after you expand this what the overall value of this uh, will be. The negative doesn't get repeated, so overall my answer should have a negative. And since the 3 is repeated four times, that's 3 to the fourth. And y to the fourth, we just evaluated 3 to the fourth. We know that that's 81. So I end up with negative 81y to the 4th. So make sure that you're only distributing that 4 essentially to um, the inside of that product here, which is 3y, so 3 to the 4th, y to the 4th, that negative stays on the outside, okay? So really, really similar to what we just saw over here with number 10, but very different um, in terms of its value. So Make sure you understand this, the difference between when you are not repeating a negative and here when you are repeating the negative because it's on the inside of your parentheses. Next up, quotient of powers property. When you see a quotient, like here we have x to the a over x to the b, you're going to just subtract your exponents. So to divide powers with the same base, you subtract your exponents and you're going to keep your base. So for example, in number 13, since I do not have the same base here, I cannot just subtract my exponents. My final answer here is actually x to the 11th over y to the 7th. I can't do anything here because it doesn't follow this rule. Now in 14, I can write this as 6 to the 5th over 6 to the 3rd and simplify that as 6 squared. I simply subtract the exponents. Then I have 3 cubed over 3 squared. Subtract your exponents and you get 3 to the 1st. So this is 36 times 3 
which is 108. So you can evaluate something that looks really tough to do without a calculator easily if you use your exponent properties. And number 15, um, here I can do this a couple different ways. I can add the exponents in the numerator first, call that 12 to the 8th, and then 12 to the 8th over 12 squared becomes a quotient, and I subtract my exponents to get 12 to the 6th. Now an alternate way of doing this is uh, looking at 12 to the 5th over 12 squared. That would give me 12 to the 3rd. And I still have that 12 to the 3rd in the numerator here. Adding those exponents, I get 12 to the 6th. The only thing that you don't want to do is take 12 to the 5th over 12 squared and 12 to the 3rd over 12 squared, which is what people will do, and you'll try to cancel these out as well. But it doesn't work quite like that. This can only be used one time. It's either going to uh, be used here or with this 12 cubed. Um, and the reason why is if you were to expand this, remember you'd, you'd have 12, 8, uh, or yeah, 8 12s, I should say, sorry. So if I had written 12 8 times here in the numerator, that would represent this expanded, and 12 squared in the denominator would just be two of them. Once you cancel out those two 12s in the denominator, you're clearly going to have the 6 remaining up in the top. So that's why it doesn't work to just uh, use the, the 12 squared twice, okay? So an incorrect answer that I sometimes see is using the 12 squared and saying, oh, 12 cubed over 12 squared is just 12, so I end up with 12 to the 4th here. So don't, you know, don't do that. Avoid that mistake. All right, try 16 on your own. I'm going to move on to the uh, next property. When you see a power of a quotient, so you have a quotient raised to a power, make sure you're distributing to both the numerator and denominator. It's really easy to forget and just do it to the numerator. Make sure you also uh, distribute that to the denominator. So to raise a quotient to a power, you raise the numerator and you raise the denominator. Now these are a little bit more difficult because they are um, going to combine all of the properties that we've, we've looked at so far. But the first thing I want you to always remember when you have um, a set of parentheses and an exponent on the outside, always simplify the inside of the parentheses. It makes it a lot easier on you if you just w work on simplifying the inside and then taking the exponent. So I'm actually going to ignore that fifth power here first and focus on the inside. Um, I have w squared to the third power. Notice that this third power is not getting distributed to that p here because it's only cubing the w squared. So I have w to the sixth over p and all of that now will be raised to the fifth power. So I simplify the inside of the parentheses and then I get w to the 30th over p to the fifth once I distribute that five, okay? In number 18, in the numerator here, I have uh, negative two c cubed times b raised to the fourth power. I'm gonna simplify this portion of this quotient first. So I'm gonna simplify the numerator here. Negative two to the fourth power should end up being a positive value. I'm just gonna write that here for now, but c cubed to the fourth is c to the 12th and b to the fourth power here. Now, negative two to the fourth power I just said was gonna be a positive. It's because you're raising a negative to an even. So two to the fourth is 16. So I have a positive 16. In the denominator, three c squared b squared, I'm just gonna copy that again. And after um, I recopy this, make sure you, you copy the original with that squared on the outside. And from here, I'm gonna simplify the inside again. Now 16 over 3 doesn't simplify. Don't subtract these numbers either. A lot of people will subtract them now that you know that this rule, you know, power of a quotient, you're supposed to subtract. Well, these are not exponents, right? These are simple numbers. It's just 16 divided by 3. So don't subtract that and make that 13. It's a common error. But now we will subtract the exponents here. C to the 12th over C squared is C to the 10th. B to the 4th over B squared is B squared. And now we'll raise everything to the second power. Once I raise everything to the second power, I have 16 squared, c to the 20th, b to the 4th, over 3 squared. Make sure that you're distributing that to each of these bases. There are four separate bases here. Um, that's why you see me raising the 16, the 3, the c, and the b here. And then after here, I would simplify. 16 squared is 256. That is something that you should be able to evaluate without a calculator. You don't necessarily have to have it memorized, but you should be able to multiply 16 times 16. If you have it memorized, though, it obviously makes the problem a little bit quicker. Try 19 and 20 on your own and check with the key. Okay, next property. Um, this is an important one. Anything to the zero power is always one. Okay, so in this first example here, 
um, x to the 0 over y squared, only this uh, x is to the 0 power, so only the numerator is going to be 1, and I end up with 1 over y squared. In number 22, this is different because everything on the inside is taken to the 0 power, so even if I distributed it to each base here, I would still get 2 to the 0, x to the 0, y to the 0, that's 1 times 1 times 1, I get 1 overall. So here, shorter way to do this is to say anything, so even though this anything is large, and it's not just one term, but anything to the 0 power should always be 1, okay? Now, I would like you to try 23 and 24 on your own and check with the key. Last but not least, we're going to talk about what to do when you see a negative exponent. Um, when you see a negative exponent, you're going to actually take the reciprocal, okay? Um, so, a to the negative n power becomes 1 over a to the n. Um, if you have a negative in your denominator, then it actually goes to the numerator and it becomes a to the n over 1. Now, I have a really stupid way of remembering this. Um, think of him as an unhappy kid, or an unhappy exponent, okay? He is currently upstairs. Think of the upstairs of the fraction as the numerator, the downstairs is the denominator. Well, he's mad to get happy. I don't know, maybe he's mad at his parents, he's upstairs, and he wants to go downstairs. He becomes happy once he's downstairs. Notice that he's changing to a positive exponent, um, and that's all you're going to do. Now, if he's downstairs and he's unhappy, then he needs to move upstairs. That's why you see the, the denominator becoming the 1. So a to the n over 1 is how you indicate that he moved upstairs. Okay, I know that's really stupid, but I think it does help um, to you know keep track of what you're going to move. Now, in number 25, the only guy that's unhappy is this x to the negative fifth. Y to the 4th is happy in the upstairs. He's going to stay where he is at, but X to the 5th is going to move to the denominator. In number 26, you've got some um, exponents here that are negative, and I would say that the, the best way to, to always simplify this, I like to move the negative exponents first. Once I get rid of the negative exponents, then I continue throughout the problem and simplify. So that's what I would like you to do. Um, you don't have to use this rule of thumb, but I like to use that just so I keep my work organized. So basically what I do is I go step by step. I look at 16. 16 is going to stay where it, where it is. This next term, n squared, stays where it is. I look at the next term, z to the negative second. I'm going to put it in the denominator. I'm done with that term. Now I look at m to the negative seventh. That moves to the denominator as well. That term is done. m to the first stays where it is. Okay. Then I work at the denominator, and I look at m to the negative seventh. It needs to move back to the top to become happy. So notice that it becomes happy, it has a positive exponent. So you should not see any negative exponents once you start moving um, your terms. And then finally I have this z cubed, so I keep that in the denominator because it's happy where it's at. From here then I would simplify. So I have 16n squared m times m to the first times m to the seventh. Well this is going to simplify. I have 16n squared times m to the eighth because I can just add those exponents. And then in the denominator I have z squared times z cubed excuse me, z to the 5th, and m to the 7th. Now, I'm not quite finished with this problem, because in your final answer, 1, you should see no negative exponents, and that's good because here we don't see any negative exponents, but 2, you should only have one base for each type of um, base that you have. So see how I have m to the 8th here, and an m to the 7th. I only want to see one base in my final answer, so I would simplify here and subtract those exponents. So I'm left with 16n squared m over z to the fifth. That would be my final answer here. In problem 27, the only guy that's unhappy is this y. So I would move that and make that 3 over y squared. Now, um, in this next problem, it's really easy to make a couple different mistakes here. But basically, you would have to distribute that negative 2, right, to both of them. Well, now they're both unhappy, so we would move both of them to the denominator. This ends up being 1, because nothing else is left in, in the numerator, so we need to make sure we have 1 over 3 to the second power times y to the second power. So I'd simplify that as 1 9, or I'm sorry, 1 over 9y squared. So um, a lot of times students will see that and think that means a negative 6, or I don't know, they just think of this as a negative number, but notice there is no negative, it just makes it the reciprocal, okay? It just makes it go to the denominator or to the numerator, depending on where it started off at, and it becomes positive and a positive exponent once it moves. Um, there's a second way to do this problem. 
and it's, it comes in handy actually, like let's say I, I'm going to change the problem a little bit, make this 3y over 2x squared raised to the negative second power. When you see this, you could distribute this negative 2 everywhere, you have four different bases that you'd have to distribute it to, or you can take the reciprocal right off the bat and make that 2x squared over 3y and raise that to the, the positive exponent of 2. These are actually equivalent to each other. Um, I think it's easier to do this here um, and simplify from there. So I would do the same thing for this problem, and I would make that 1 over 3y to the second power. And simplifying here, I get 1 over 3 squared times y squared, which simplifies to 1 over 9y squared. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, and then we're done with the lesson, is when you see something like negative 20x squared y cubed over um, 16x to the third y to the sixth. Okay, now sometimes I'll have students who see this negative 20 and now that they know the rule about negative exponents they want to move that to the denominator. Please don't do that. This is not an exponent at all. This is just the number negative 20. So don't, don't think that just because it has a negative it has to move. Okay, um, also like I said before 3 to the negative third is not negative 27. This is very bad. Okay, don't do that. This just moves this number to the denominator where it can become happy again, and that would equal 1 over 27, not negative 27. All right, that's the end of the lesson. I know I talked fast. Um, you'll get a lot of practice with this tomorrow. All right, nice job.